The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. week at this time, The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. There's no getting around it. Keeping a food budget balanced these days calls for real head work. No one wants to skimp on quantity, and certainly not on quality. So what's the body to do? One practical solution to the problem is to buy parquet margarine when you go marketing. Yes, you can afford to serve parquet generously at the table and use plenty of parquet in your cooking. But best of all, when you do this, you know you're making no compromise with quality. Parquet is the quality margarine made by Kraft. And the Kraft name on any food product is a name you can trust. Serve Parquet for just one week, and you'll discover what a wholesome, good-tasting food it is. Parquet always tastes so good because it's always fresh. Every package is flavor-dated, and that means Kraft can guarantee the freshness of every pound. So tomorrow, pick up a pound or two of good-tasting, fresh-tasting parquet margarine at your grocer's. In most markets, you can buy parquet in handy yellow quarters ready for the table. But remember, in any package for any use, parquet is the only margarine that brings craft quality right to your table. Remember parquet. (laughs) P-A-R-K-A-Y. The great Gildersleeve's occasional excursions down the road to romance have always been rocky and beset with detours, but he has never encountered anything like the roadblock set up by Paula Winthrop's daughter, Bath. However, the great Gildersleeve is not one to turn back, and like a big bulldozer, he's plowing ahead again tonight. Right, George, I feel lucky tonight. Yes, sir, things are going to be different this time. The idea that little Bab's trying to chaperone her mother and me all the time. I don't need chaperoning. I'm a grown adult. If she can't take a hint and leave us alone, I'll just have to outmaneuver her, that's all. Are you leaving now, Hawkey? In a few minutes, Marjorie. Paula's expecting me around eight. Off to the wars again tonight, Unc. Leroy, when I have a date with Mrs. Winthrop, I don't exactly consider it a battle. Ah! <laughs> Young man, what do you mean by that? Every time you go over there, it's a battle, trying to outsmart Bad. She's me. Oh, Leroy, you think everything she does is cute. Yes, Leroy. Whose side are you on? Well, I have to be neutral. She's my girlfriend and you're my uncle. Who pays my allowance. <laughs> yes, yes. Poor Unky. He can't have a minute alone with Paula. Hey, don't worry, Marjorie. I'm taking Paula out tonight. In that sack. How are you going to sneak away, Unc? Have you got a helicopter hovering over the house? <laughs> no, Leroy. If I can't outsmart little Babs, I'd better quit. Oh! Turn in your suit. <laughs> Leroy. Just kidding. What's your strategy? Auntie, why don't you invite Babs over here? She and Leroy can play records. Oh, she won't leave the house tonight as much as she'd like to see me. You, oh, my goodness. As soon as Babs found out Uncle was coming over, she said she had to practice her piano lessons. And the piano's in the parlor. Get it, Unc? <laughs> I should by now. She's pulled it three times. What a brain she's got. Well, I have a brain, too. When I go over to see Paula, Babs will insist on staying in the parlor and practicing on the piano. Yeah. In the minute I get her to commit herself, and she can't back out, I'll say, Well, Babs, your mother and I are going to a movie. Too bad you have a lot of piano practicing to do. <laughs> hey. That's not a bad idea, Auntie. How'd you ever think of that? Well, I haven't spent the whole day at the water department for nothing. <laughs> All day for that? What a character. <laughs> yeah, this plan can't miss. Babs will insist she has to practice. Paul and I will go to the movie. We don't interfere with Babs, and she can't interfere with us. You're sly, Gildersleeve. Hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Paula. Come in. 
So glad to see you. Uh, thank you. Glad to see you, too. Couldn't wait until late because I had a very important date. <laughs> Here, let me take your hat and coat. Uh, glad to. Uh, yeah. Well, you have a nice fire in the fireplace. Just for you. Sit down, Throckmorton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I don't think it's going to last long. Mother! Yes, Bab? Yeah, I'm calling my shots tonight. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, well, hello, Bab. Mother, I hate to intrude on you and Mr. Gildersleeve like this, but I simply have to practice the piano tonight. Oh, must you, Bab? Bullseye. <laughs> well, you're always telling me I don't practice enough, and the lessons are so expensive. Mm -hmm. if, if I can't practice, I may as well give them up. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't want me to do that, would you? Well, of course not, but... Well, then I'll have to practice. Professor James has been criticizing my technique. He says I'm a little heavy-handed. Yeah, I'll say she is. <laughs> well, I suppose I shouldn't discourage your belated interest in music. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't. Mr. Gildersleeve, you probably think I'm always interfering when you have a date with Mother. Me? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for your practicing. Glad you want to do it. <laughs> Isn't he a dear Mother? Now, let's see what I'll place first. In fact, Paula, we owe it to Babs to let her catch up on her practice. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're so sweet to think about me. You bet. Paula, let's you and I go to a movie. A movie? Mr. Gildersleeve... I didn't know you planned to take Mother to a movie. Yeah, it seems like a good idea since you have to stay home and practice. But... You, we mustn't get behind in our music, you know. <laughs> what do you say, Paula? Movie, huh? Oh, mm -hmm. I'd like that. Great. Let's get our coats. I thought we'd see Sunset Sonata. It's the best picture in town. Mr. Gildersleeve, did you say Sunset Sonata? Yep. Have fun practicing on the piano band. <laughs> Mother, how can you do this to me? Well, do what, Deb? Well, that's the picture with Yasha Mitz, the concert pianist. I, I really should go with you and study his technique. Zeke. <laughs> Not bad. Mother, you promised to take me to see it. You, you said yourself it might help my music. And the bill changes tomorrow. Well, I know I promised, Bab, but... Mr. Gildersleeve won't mind, will you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well... You, you, you just said I shouldn't get behind in my music. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Do you mind awfully, Throckmorton? Not at all. Of course, the practice at home might do her more good. Oh, I can practice at home any time. Wait until you come over again, Mr. Gildersleeve. You'll see. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, let's get our coats. We mustn't be out too late. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, you make the most wonderful suggestions. Yeah. You'll just love Sunset Sonata. Yasha Mitz plays a dreamy concerto just as the sun is setting outside his bay window. <laughs> My sun is set already. <laughs> last night was. The minute we got home from the movie, Babs got a headache, and I had to go home. Yeah, well, better pick up some aspirin on my way to the office. She thinks she has a headache. Hello, Petey. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Give me a box of aspirin, Petey. Very yeah, well. Would you like the large economy size? You bet. Looks like this headache is here to stay. Yeah, well, I uh, saw you at the movies last night, Mr. Gildersleeve. You? I didn't see you, Peavy. Mrs. Peavy and I were in the balcony. In the balcony? Yes, ever since our courting days, we've gone up to the balcony. <laughs> Sentimental about it, huh, Peavy? No, it's cheaper. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I had a hankering to drop some popcorn down on you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I... I was afraid it might land on one of your guests. You, them. Mrs. Peavy wanted to know who was with you, so I told her Mrs. Winthrop and her daughter, Babs. Yep. Then Mrs. Peavy wanted to know why the daughter was sitting between you and Mrs. Winthrop. 
I couldn't answer that. <laughs> you know, I can't be. You know, I'll never get to see Paula alone if Babs can help it. She always drums up some excuse to sit around with us or tag along. Well, it seems that was the case last night. It happens all the time. Certainly must be embarrassing to her mother. Mm, that could be. Yeah, I'm sure Paula wants to be alone with me as much as I want to be alone with her. Well, yeah, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I would be. Well, there doesn't seem to be any way we can prove it. Why, George, I'm going to prove it. Last night, Paula even said I've been very indulgent. And that's over with. And I'm afraid I'll have to tell that so. It gets a little monotonous, Petey, planning a twosome and always ending up a threesome. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, your predicament reminds me of an old song I sang once in a hometown play. Never mind, P.D. It was called I Never See Maggie Alone. <laughs> she brings her father, her mother, Indeed. her sister, and her brother, but I never see Maggie alone. You won't see me again either. Goodbye, P.D. <laughs> the most wonderful movie last night, Leroy. I didn't think so. I guess he was bored. I thought I heard him snore once. And you know why he was bored, Babs. I do? Sure you do. You trapped him. Little me? Look, Babs, why don't you give Uncle a break? He likes your mother. Who knows, if you didn't interfere, Uncle and your mother might get married someday. Leroy Forrester, my mother marry your uncle? <laughs> What's so funny about that? My father never take him seriously. Yeah? Uncle's a pretty good-looking guy when he's dressed up. <laughs> Leroy, if your uncle is so attractive, why has he been single all these years? Well, well, he works pretty hard at the water department. Mr. Gildersleeve wouldn't dare propose to my mother. How can he with you sitting around? <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. If he started proposing, Mother'd refuse him before he stopped stammering. Yeah? Well, if you let them alone, it wouldn't surprise me if your mother proposed to my uncle. <laughs> leap year, you know. That's a leap no smart woman like my mother would take. Is that so? I'll bet your mother's just been waiting for leap year so she can propose to Uncle without feeling embarrassed. For your information, Smarty, my mother isn't the least bit interested in being Mrs. Gildersleeve. Oh, yeah? Then why do you always hang around when they're together? Why don't you leave them alone? All right, just to prove it, I'll leave them alone. You'll see who does the proposing. It'll be your mother. It'll be your uncle if he isn't too tubby to get down on his knees. You <laughs> bad, Leroy. Hey, here's Uncle now. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Uncle. Hello, kitty. Babs, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Well, what about Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, it's about these evenings I try to spend with your mother. Oh, well, I want to talk to you about that, too. Yeah, all right, but let me talk first. Babs, I hate to have to tell you this, but... Uh, excuse me for interrupting, Mr. Gildersleeve, but before I forget it, I, I'd like to suggest that you call Mother for a date this evening. You? What are you going to do? Practice in the piano? Oh, no. I just thought it would be nice for you. Because Mother will be there all alone. Hey, where are you going to be? <laughs> She'll be here at our house. Won't you, Bab? Why don't you go on over, Unc? Will you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Please? Well... I, I feel terribly guilty about having to practice piano so much and having so many headaches. Honor bright. You must have many romantic things to say to my mother. No fair, Bab. Well, I hadn't planned on doing anything this evening. But if your mother's alone, there's no use in two people being alone. <laughs> You're getting the idea. Yeah, I think I'll take your advice and phone your mother for a date. That's very thoughtful of you, Ben. Oh, not at all. Now, um, what did you want to tell me, Mr. Gildersleeve? To tell you? You? Oh, oh, yes. You, well, I, I just want to tell you that you're a fine little girl. <laughs> oh, brother. That's a bigger pigeon than I thought. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. 
Of course, you have your own favorite way of making pancakes, and I'm sure they're wonderful. But here's a way to make them extra wonderful. Just crown them with two or three big pats of parquet margarine and let its delicious flavor melt down through the stack. Then you really have a feast. And parquet is just as appetizing as a spread for toast and rolls and as a seasoning for hot vegetables. No matter how you serve it, this margarine made by Kraft always tastes so good. And that's because parquet is always fresh. Kraft guarantees the freshness of every pound of parquet. Whenever or wherever you buy it, you can be sure it's at its peak of flavor. When you go shopping tomorrow, pick up a pound or two of good-tasting, fresh-tasting parquet. It's the only margarine that brings Kraft quality right to your table. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet. Well, the great Gildersleeve doesn't know it, but he's right in the middle of romantic intrigue. Babs claims the water commissioner is just waiting for a chance to propose to her attractive mother. Leroy went out on a limb claiming that Mrs. Winthrop would take advantage of leap year and propose to his uncle. Now, Leroy suspects he's out on a pretty weak limb. Leroy, what made you say a foolish thing like that? Well, Babs made me sore. I told her she ought to let uncle and her mother be alone once in a while. Good for you, Leroy. Well, then one word led to another until I was claiming her mother would propose to Unc if Babs gave her the chance. You did get carried away, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. Boy, I wish she would propose to Unc. I sure would have the laugh on Babs. Well, I know Miss Winthrop likes Mr. Gillsleeve. That's a start. Maybe all she needs is a little encouragement. Bertie, do you think we can make Unc irresistible? <laughs> well, how much time do we have? Until tonight at 8.30? It's 5.15 already. Um, we better get stuck. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Hi, Unc. Well, hello, Leroy. Bertie. Evening, Mr. Gilfrey. Have you seen the afternoon paper, Bertie? Yes, it's in the parlor by your chair. You don't have time to read, Unc. You have to get ready for tonight. You're right. You got a date, you know. Oh, plenty of time to get ready for that. I haven't had dinner yet. Hey, Unc, how about having Marge giving you a manicure while you're waiting? Manicure? Can I run up and get your blue serge suit so Bertie can press it? <laughs> you Bertie pressed it yesterday, Leroy. But you wore it to the movie. You gotta look sharp. Glad to press it for you, Miss Gillsleeve. Yeah, what a family. I get a date and everybody's pulling for me. <laughs> Unc, you're not gonna wear that same old tie, are you? Same tie? The one with the water hydrants on it? <laughs> <laughs> my boy, that's my favorite. The meter readers gave me that. <laughs> Me to read us. You've got to impress Mrs. Winthrop. Well, what's your suggestion? For some reason, you seem to have a lot of them. Well, I'll go up and snitch one of Bronco's. Kind Marge used to swoon over it. Well, I hadn't planned to make Mrs. Winthrop swoon. Can't you try? You this? And after you shave, put on some of that shaving lotion you got for Christmas. The kind they say wows the ladies. <laughs> no, Leroy. You may as well put it on, Mr. Gilfrey, because Leroy's bound and determined you're going to wire a certain lady tonight. Well, could be. Oh, boy, Unc. I'll show that bad. Mother. Yes, Babs. Mr. Gildersleeve proposed to you, you wouldn't accept, would you? Oh, I've never given it a thought. Well, just the same, if he should, you you wouldn't accept, would you? Well, let's put it this way. If any man asked me to marry him, I'd have to give it a lot of thought. Mm, that's good enough for me. Are are you going to wear those plain earrings? Oh, I plan to. Why don't you wear the long diamond teardrops? The ones that make you look like Cleopatra. But... Babs, they're a little dressy. Well, what's wrong with dressing up? After all, you want to look as attractive as possible, don't you? Even for Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> oh, well, naturally, Babs, but... A and if I were you, Mother, I'd wear my new party dress. Well, I was saving it for the Elks Club dance next month. Oh, wear it tonight, Mother. Will you? Just for me? Oh, but, Babs... You'll be the most beautiful mother in the whole world. <laughs> all right, I'll go slip into it. Why save it for the Elks with that big moose coming over tonight? <laughs> yeah, I 
right, George. My collar's a little tight. Must be putting on weight. I'm beginning to look like a big moose. <laughs> Let me brush you off before you go downstairs, huh? Yeah, thank you, my boy. How do I look? Murder! Excuse me, Judge Lucas down here. You're coming right down, Bertie. Wonder what he wants. Hello, Judge. Hello, Gilda. My, you're a perfect model of what the well-dressed man should wear. What's so unusual about that? You usually look like what the well-dressed man used to wear. <laughs> Judge, what do you have on your mind? Well, I can see that you don't want to go bowling. Uh, no, indeed. I have a date. Oh? Visiting with Mrs. Winthrop and her daughter? No, not this time. Paula and I are going to be alone tonight. How did you manage that? Well, confidentially, Horace, I think Paula had a little talk with Babs. I think she laid down the law. That's interesting. Yeah, I'll say it is. Gilday, does it seem strange to you that after all these months, Mrs. Winthrop has started arranging these things early in 1952? What do you mean, Judge? Don't you know? It's leap year. Say, it is. I hadn't thought of that. I have, but nobody's asked me yet. <laughs> well, Judge, I'm sure Paula has nothing like that in mind. I wouldn't be too sure, Gilda. There are many reasons why she might want to get married. She's young and appealing. <laughs> She's that. And she has a daughter who needs a father. Judge, you're talking through your hat. No, I'm not. I don't even have it on. <laughs> well, put it on, Judge, and I'll see you to your car. Oh. Lovely evening. Hello, little star. Twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> yeah, I can hardly realize this will be the first evening I've ever been alone with Paula. Yeah, I wonder if she did arrange to get Babs out of the house this evening. Thoughtful woman. Oh, come in, sir. Oh, my. Good evening, Paula. I... Mm. <laughs> nice. My, aren't you handsome? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what a gorgeous tie. I adore fuchsia. Yeah, thank you. First time I've worn it. Now, let me take a look at you. Do you, uh, approve? Do I? Wow. <laughs> of course, it's a little dressy for a date at home. Well, this is no ordinary date, Paula. It's really the first evening we've had to ourselves. It is, isn't it? Oh, let's sit here on the couch by the fire. Great. You? You really sat on your satin skirt? <laughs> It, it is quite billowy. He's never looked at me like that before. <laughs> Nothing like a log fire and soft lights. Well, I didn't realize it was so dark in here. Bad must have turned off some of the lights before she left. You don't get up. They're fine. <laughs> Blaming the low lights on Bad. I wonder if Paula turned them down on purpose. He wants the lights down low. Next, he'll be wanting soft music. Uh, Paula? Yes? Yeah. Why don't I put on some records? Something soothing. Uh, Throckmorton, why don't we just sit and talk? Well, suits me. I believe he did come over to propose. She must have some reason for wanting to just talk. I wonder if she would take advantage of leap year. Well, I, uh, I suggested we talk, but... I find it difficult to begin. You do? I guess she never proposed before. <laughs> it must be that we're so unaccustomed to being alone. Yeah, I guess so. I can't help feeling that Babs has annoyed you at times. But I think she actually enjoys being around you, Throckmorton. Well, I hadn't thought about it that way. A girl like Babs needs a father's influence. Zeke, the judge was right. <laughs> It's the same way with my brother, Rumson. When he's home, she never lets him out of her sight. Well, he'll be back soon. I hope. <laughs> Paul's a wonderful woman. But I'd have to think this over. Yeah, I'd better change the subject. Paula? Mm-hmm? 
Have you looked across the street recently? Bronco and Marjorie are starting the foundation for their new house. Yes, I've noticed. It won't be long before they'll be moving out, leaving little Leroy and me. Oh, you won't be lonely. I don't plan to be. I wonder if she's just waiting for that to happen. I wonder if he thinks he's going to take me over there. (laughs) He's nice, but I don't want to get serious. She's beautiful, but I can't afford her. Uh, Frost Morton, it's a little warm here by the fire. It sure is. I think I'll move over to the chair. Well, I was about to move to the piano bench myself. Uh, We might even go for a walk and get some fresh air. Great idea. I'll get my coat. And here's your hat. Yeah, thank you. Let me help you with your rack. I have it. Well, I'll open the door. Oh, what wonderful air. Yep, it's free, too. (laughs) Paula, why don't we go to a movie? We can take baths. You want to take that? You bet. It looks like Leroy, too. There's safety in numbers. Well, I think that's a wonderful idea, Clark Morton. Oh, that was close. The good thing I thought of a walk. Well, I got out of that. Good thing I thought of a movie. Leroy! Bam! <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. There's only one margarine at your grocer's that brings craft quality right to your table. It's Parquet, the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Tomorrow, pick up a pound or two of good-tasting, fresh-tasting Parquet margarine. Ask for P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. You wait. Where are you going, Leroy? I'll see you home, Unc. Good night, Bab. Good night, Leroy. Oh, good night, Mother. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Babs, wait. Oh, it's way past my bedtime, Mother. I'm going in the house. Good night. Oh. It's the first time I've seen Babs in a hurry to get to bed. You well, kids are hard to figure. That Babs, running away and leaving us alone. She is beautiful. <laughs> I wonder if I should ask her. It, uh, it was a lovely evening, Throckmorton. I, uh, <laughs> Paula? Uh, yes, Throckmorton? Would you like a hamburger? <laughs> oh, I'd love it. Great, let's go. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Ketley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Barbara Whiting, Jean Bates, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious Kraft prepared mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, smooth and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with Kraft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild Kraft mustard and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. Tonight, be sure to hear the Robert Montgomery News Program on NBC. NBC.